Thank you for the introduction. So the, the problem that we are going to, to deal with in this talk is a, if we are given two modeling languages in terms of a meta models and well formedness constraints. For example, here we have a meta model that defines graphs. We have the notion of uh, node, the notion of edge, and nodes can be marked. And here we have a uh, constraint that defines that only the the valid graphs in this meta model are going to be those that define function graphs. In the second meta model, we have the description, the definition of state machines, where states can be observed. And we have a constraint that defines that only those state machines that are deterministic are valid in, the, in this meta model. And the, the question that we want to address is are these two meta models compatible? Are we going to be able to use state machines? wherever a graph a conforming to this a meta model specification is used. And what is that useful for? Uh, there are a number of use cases in which this can be very useful. For example, when we are talking about different versions of the same meta model, and um, for example, we may have different uh, versions of the, uh, of the same machine meta model, we want to ensure forward and backward compatibility of the operations defined for that language. For example, we, we may have a translational semantics implemented with code generators for version one of the meta model, and we want to make sure that a, uh, the posterior versions can still reuse that semantics or that preserve that semantics. Another use case is when these two modeling languages are independent of each other, but they still have some intrinsic similarities, like for example, the similarities that we have between state, uh, deterministic state machines and function graphs. And in that case, our tool provides, our, our approach will provide support for reusing model management operations defined for the a, a graph, a, a meta model, so that we can, in this case, we, have a, an, we could have an operation for applying a function to a node, and we could reuse that, that operation for a simulating a, state, a deterministic state machine state, stepwise. These use cases are defined, uh, are documented on the web page, and they have been implemented using our approach. Our, our solution to this problem is by taking, by taking meta models defined in uh, EMF, in the Eclipse modeling framework, and we are going to use OCL constraints in use format. For us, the, uh, the semantics of those meta models are going to be given in terms of abstract syntax, syntax graphs, uh, where the uh, nodes can be typed with classes of uh, the meta model, hence the arrow for the, uh, for the node in meta models. And we are also going to represent a meta models textually using model type expressions. And that in this case, we are going to be able to represent abstract syntax, syntax graphs as terms that are typed. And the reason for that is that we are going to be able to reuse a semantics of multiple inheritance proposed by Cardelli back in the 88. Um, when working with meta models, our goal is to reuse a, um, the use validator for, also for reasoning about OCL constraints. And our solution is going to map these two representations for meta models and their semantics. And in the following, I'm going to present our solution that is structured in three, in three parts. In the first part, I'm going to talk about how to achieve structural model subtyping between meta models. Then we will augment that subtyping relation with OCO constraints. And finally, we'll talk about the, the tool. A, um, let's start with the structural model subtyping. Uh, Cardelli proposed a semantics of multiple inheritance and proposed a subtyping a, a relation that we are going that we have extended with referential constraints and that we have generalized to the notion of model type. For us, a model type expression is a pair of a set of a class names that are the root classes of the meta model, and then we have a map type that maps its class name to its type expression. And just to illustrate what a model type expression looks like, here we have a meta model, and this is the type expression for that. And this is the model type expression that defines a, the object type for each a meta class in the meta model. 
this uh, notation is very similar to what you could get using emphatic, the, the emphatic notation. And in fact, the emphatic tool can uh, uh, generate this uh, textual syntax for metamodels in a very similar way. Um, this is the, uh, we are extending the notation, the syntax that Cardelli used um, by providing support for containment references and for references. And we are adding referential constraints, a, uh, including multiplicity, order uniqueness, and, and a bidirectionality. For us, a model type is the uh, union type formed by all the types associated with the uh, root class names of the metamodel. And this model type is defined with a number of equations that are included in the paper. I don't intend to cover them all here. Um, then we define we have refined the structural model subtyping by using the uh, so we say that a uh, model type expression is subtype of an defines a subtype of another model type expression if the type corresponding to the root classes in the first model type expression defines a subtype of the uh, a type for the uh, root class names in the second model type expression. This uh, subtyping relationship, this subtyping relation is also defined by a number of rules that are specified in the paper. But here, just a couple of highlights to uh, explain our contribution. We have extended this subtyping relation by identifying inconsistencies so that a, uh, incons inconsistencies for checking referential constraints so that a referential constraint can only be strengthened in a subtype. And we are also adding a uh, memory for ensuring the decidability of the, of the satisfaction of the subtyping relation when traversing uh, references. Now, so far we have a, uh, we are able to check if a model type expression defines a subtype of another model type expression. Now we are going to deal, we are going to augment model type expressions with a uh, OCO constraint. And for that, we are going to, use, to reuse the semantics described by Richters and Martin Gorgola in Richters' thesis for metamodels, where metamodels were described as class diagrams. A, uh, the semantics is the set of abstract syntax graphs a, uh, that can be defined with that metamodel. We, in, the, in our work, we have defined a, a, sema, a semantics translation to from this ontological semantics to linguistic semantics, where the uh, abstract syntax graphs are encoded as terms. And a model type for a metamodel is given by the composition of the uh, a, uh, interpretation function for uh, a class diagrams and the uh, semantics translation that we have described in the paper. This, this semantics translation is uh, based on a translation of abstract syntax graphs to terms. And then we lift that, uh, trans um, the transformation to the semantics level. But we have also said that a metamodel can be represented using a model type expression. And um, in the previous part, in, in the first part, I said that we, once we are given a model type expression, we can define the model type for, for it. So there should be a way of linking these two represent syntactic representations, and that's achieved by a map that we call declaration, which we assume to be there. And in fact, it, it seems a reasonable as assumption because it has been, that's implemented in several tools, like for example, in emphatic. So a sy syntactic model subtyping in this context for uh, a metamodels uh, is, is as follows. So we say that a, a metamodel defines a subtype of another metamodel if the uh, model type expression for the first metamodel defines this subtype of the model type expression for the second metamodel. And uh, on a semantic level, we get subtyping by some assumption, as in Cardelli's work. So reusing the, interpre the interpretation of OCL expressions defined in Richter's thesis, we can also define, we can constrain the semantics of a metamodel so that we, we can have this, the linguistic semantics for a metamodel enriched with constraints. Now the problem that we have, sorry, the problem that we have now is that a, uh, the subtyping relationships 
that we have in a, between the uh, subtype metamodel and the supertype metamodel are implicit because they are structural. And the uh, tools that, are, that allow us to work, to reason about those constraints, work with explicit uh, subtyping uh, relationships that are, that are defined with generalizations. So what we are going, what we have done in our work is to define, to synthesize, to, to synthesize an extension metamodel in order to verify structural subtypings that are inferred automatically using our subtyping a, uh, relation. And that extension metamodel is going to be used for analyzing OCL constraints from the uh, subtype metamodel and the supertype metamodel. So let's see, let's give an idea of how this works. Given to a metamodel for the intended supertype and the metamodel for the intended subtype, we use the subtyping relation and we infer the structural subtypings. Then we extract for the uh, for each pair in the uh, for each pair of classes in the uh, supertype metamodel, we apply a procedure that extracts virtual classes for ensuring the diamond property of in order to ensure that a feature is only defined once in the supertype. We still have a du duplicate features in the uh, in the subtype and th the next step what we do is to refactor the extension meta model in order to avoid those duplicates in the subtype and what we do is to pull up the features defined in the subtype and, and replace the ones in the supertype with the ones defined in the subtype that is we uh, re we uh, take the constraints defined in the subtype and we pull them up to the supertype Meta model. With this is the uh, with this what we achieve is that the model type defined by the extension meta model subsumes the uh, subtype meta model and is subsumed by the supertype meta model. And in addition, we get that the uh, generalizations defined between classes in the subtype meta model and in the uh, supertype meta model correspond to subtype to structural subtyping. This, um, together with this extension meta model, our, our solution also generates complements of the uh, subtype meta model and of the supertype meta model. And that information is the part of the corresponding meta model that has not been, that is not covered by the extension meta model. And that gives us an idea of what classes may cause problems. For example, if we have, if we had a concept in the supertype that is not included in the extension meta model, that would mean that the supertype meta model is not an actual a total type of the subtype, it's only a partial type, and that may cause problems in order to reuse uh, operations. And so far, our approach, in our approach, I have explained how to, uh, to infer structural subtypings using multiple inheritance semantics, but in some contexts, a multiple inheritance may not be allowed. And our tool enumerates all the strict subtypings that are allowed and ranks them by the, uh, taking into account the amount of concepts that, that have been covered by the subtyping. So the, the subtyping that, is, that covers the most concepts is the recommended solution. So in this case, in, in that way, we get the semantics, the model type of a mod, metamodel specification by using the interpretation of metamodels enriched with OCL constraints as defined in Richter's thesis, and then we translate that semantics to, to linguistic semantics. Uh, we define the subtyping relationship between metamodel specifications that involve metamodels and constraints by using a structural subtyping between the metamodels and by defining this compatibility property in the extension metamodel that ensures that if the uh, constraints of the subtype are satisfied, and then the constraints of the supertype must be satisfied as well. And we get a subtyping by subsumption on the semantic level. Now let's see what our tool does. Our tool a gets to metamodel specifications defined with the metamodel is defined with the Eclipse modeling framework, and the OCL constraints are defined with use in use format. Our tool works as a Java library that is a independent of Eclipse, so you could you can reuse that library from any JVM context. And what we can do with our tool with with our library is to 
check this predicate, whether two metamodel whether one spe metamodel specification defines a subtype of another one. If the check, if this predicate holds, our tool generates a proof that of that claim, and that proof is the extension metamodel. The extension metamodel can also be used to reuse um, operations defined for the supertype metamodel. And if there is a problem and that predicate fails, our, so our tool in indicates, uh, helps us identify where the problem is. So if the problem is in the metamodel, then the we give a, um, the uh, complement of the supertypes and the subtype metamodels that have been generated, and also the extension metamodels that have been generated. And the user can inspect the complement supertype to see what a concepts could not be covered by the subtyping that has been inferred. And that information can be used to then a, uh, apply to some analysis on the operations that need to be reused in order to infer the effective meta model, for example, and in order to see what concepts need to be removed from the supertype meta model in order for the subtyping to be in, uh, inferred correctly. If there is a problem in the OCL constraints, what our tool does is to try to find a witness model that satisfies the constraints in the subtype meta model and that, that violates a constraint in uh, one constraint in defined for the supertype meta model. Uh, yeah, that witness is found through a tool called Totem MDE that uh, integrates the use validator into the Eclipse modeling framework, and that has been of great help for implementing our tool. So we get a, if we get that witness, that witness is an abstract syntax graph that a, uh, satisfies this, this property, that is the negation of the uh, OCL compatibility property that I have explained in the previous slide. And with that information, the user can check what constraints have been violated and these can be amended. So as you see, this is a feedback loop where our tool provides help to the user in order to find errors in case any error appears when inferring the subtyping and that information can be used in order to twist the metamodel specifications in order to maximize the chances to reuse model management of operations defined for the supertype metamodel. So for concluding the talk, I have a briefly presented a, uh, an approach for inferring structural model subtypings between metamodels that are defined with well-formedness constraints. And the advantage is that these metamodel specifications do not need to be related a priori. So the, the uh, tool infers subtypings and those subtypings pro a support some adaptations for free. So uh, the class, the names of the classes are not taken into account. So it works with all possible renamings for classes. And our tool also provides support for reusing model management operations for the, uh, defined for the supertype meta model. And in case a subtyping cannot be inferred, it provides insight of where the errors can, uh, may may be, and it provides support for a uh, context in where strict subtyping, st strict typing is, so where strict inheritance is required. And although we haven't mentioned here, uh, in the web page of the tool, we have implemented several use cases, and those use cases we are using a number of auxiliary uh, uh, tools that our tool provides for computing the effective meta model of a metamodel specification and for computing retype, uh, automatic retypings. Our approach provides support for flexible modeling, um, allowing support for dynamic, partial, and multiple typing. And there are also some limitations in our approach due uh, to the fact that we're using a, stru a structural subtyping, per se, and the uh, Criticism there is that if the metamodels are small enough and they don't contain, and there are classes that do not contain attributes, then a, uh, we may not be able to find a meaningful subtyping for those classes. Um, for more complex, for more realistic metamodels, 
this may not be this may be considered an extreme uh, case and also our solution is is based on the bounded model finders for finding weaknesses and that also has its its own weaknesses so thank you very much <laughs>